E ona nei kororo ki te wata wa tihei Māori ora, no mai, hari mai ki te nei fara kara ki a tena koto, tena koto, tena tata koto. Good morning, school. Please be seated. Thank you for the music, Jesse, as well as we, as you let us in this morning with that. Kia ora whānau, welcome to, to chapel. It feels quite strange to be back at the lectern at the start of a service after all these many weeks of fantastic Year 9 chapel services, but it is good to be back before you as we conclude with the penultimate chapel service of the year. And today we're thinking about Santa, Father Christmas, and his story, his legacy, and his conspiracy as well. So we'll unpack that shortly. The Lord be with you. Am I on my own? The Lord be with you? No. You're not really used to pantomime, are you, in New Zealand? It's a bit of a, bit of a British thing, but anyway. The Lord be with you? That's better. This is the day that the Lord has made. Wonderful. You should be rejoicing. You've only got two days of school left. Then let's pray. Loving God, you made the stars, the moon, and the sun, you, which give light and rhythm to our lives. Through your Son, you offer us this special season so that we may prepare our hearts and homes to receive the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Send us your Holy Spirit like a guiding star to lead us all through this season so that we may be ready to celebrate with great joy and happiness the birth of your Son, the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have our Bible reading, which Arjun's going to read for us today. The Bible reading. When Jesus was born, kings arrived bearing gifts. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judah, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who came who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he, would, when he had called together all the people's chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in, in, Bethlehem in Judah, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will, be, will come a ruler who... Who, who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from, the ne- from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until, they, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and, the, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense of, of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another route. Here ends the reading. Father Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? Nothing? Or something? Who wants something for Christmas? Yeah? Okay, they've got the parents to watch this now on the YouTube channel. Let's see how. What do you want for Christmas? Shout it out. Who's honest enough to say what they really want for Christmas? Can't hear. Find anything, eh? Not a failure. A good Christmas. That's a nice wish. Anybody else? Gonna have to warm the crowd up this morning. It's a tough gig at 8 o'clock. Anyway, what do most people want for Christmas is actually in this box. 
in this gold box is what most people, according to a, a recent national newspaper survey, want for Christmas, is, has been placed in this box. What most of you want for Christmas is in this box. Who wants to find out what it is? Who's going to come and look? Eddie, you were first. So in this box, come on up, is what most people want for Christmas. It's not alive. Okay. Are you ready to find out what it is? Do you want to find out or just Eddie? Private for Eddie or everybody? Shh, don't tell anybody. This is what most people want for Christmas. Does it hold that? Is it heavy? Is it light? Okay. Do you want to find out what it is? Okay. So just face that direction. Okay. Shut your eyes. On the count of three, I want you to open the box. Are you ready? Can you open your eyes now? Three, two, one. <laughs> What's in the box? What most people want for Christmas is a nice surprise. Eddie, thank you for being such a good sport. Give him a round of applause. Okay. Come and see me for a, a chocolate gift after chapel for being a good sport. What most people want for Christmas is actually to be surprised. And unfortunately, so many of us these days know exactly what we're getting for Christmas. We get, put our requests in and people ask us, and we let them know, and there's not really much of surprise on Christmas Day uh, what's been wrapped up for us. But you might not get anything. You might be on Santa's naughty list. So you might have been struck off already, especially in some of the houses. No say, no names. But how do you find out if you're on the naughty list? Well, you do this, the incredible alphamatic naughty or nice determinator. So you just filter yourself through there and you'll find out if you're on Santa's naughty list or not. It's quite simple. You ask yourself some questions. Do you play nicely with others? Choose your response from the list. Yes, sometimes. No, I want to be a wrestler. Do you keep your room clean? Yes, sometimes. Not at all. Small children and pets go missing in my room for weeks. Do you tell the truth, even if you're asked if you were naughty? And finally... What snack are you going to leave for Santa this year on Christmas Eve, if at all? Answer those questions, and then you can find out if you're on Santa's naughty list or not. We've had a leak, a leak from the North Pole, and this year's 2021 Santa's naughty list has been leaked. Are you on it? Not sure what's going on there. Go back. There's the leaked list. From 2021, list of boys, list of girls. Are you on there? Oscar, Noah, Sam, Riley, George, Ethan, William, Josh, James, Jacob, Thomas, Charlie. Surely not Charlie after yesterday. Must be a different Charlie. I'll stop it there. There's the list. So you've got 24 days to put things right if you're on the list. How does Santa do it? How does he do this incredible thing on Christmas Eve? First of all, he needs flying reindeer. If reindeer can't fly, we say, but we are told, I don't know how they know this, but there's 300,000 species of living organisms waiting to be classified. Maybe there are reindeer that can fly and only Santa can see them. We've got two billion children in the world. If we take out other faiths, look at the Christian, the Christian story, we're looking at 378 million children that need to be visited. That's Assuming there's one good child in there, or three and a half children per household, that's 91.8 million homes to visit. He's got 31 hours to do it because of the time zones. That works out, he's got 822.6 visits per second, and he's got 75 and a half million miles to travel. His sleigh needs to move at 650 miles per second, that's 3,000 times the speed of sound. And assuming that each child gets nothing more than a medium-sized Lego set, he's got to carry 353,000 tons, and to do that he needs 214,200 reindeer. 
However, 353,000 tonnes of gifts travelling at 650 miles per second creates air resistance. The thing will heat up, the sleigh, the reindeer will heat up like a spacecraft re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, and as a result, it will burst into flame instantaneously. It will vaporise. The entire reindeer team of over 200,000 reindeer will disappear in 4.26 thousandths of a second. Average weight of a reindeer, uh, sort of sand, if you say 100 kilo, he's going to be pinned to the back of a sleigh by 2,000 tonnes of force. And also, Santa has to deal with us humans, trying to catch him every year as he visits their home. So it's hard for Santa. He's got to deal with all those numbers, statistics, and us. So in conclusion, if Santa ever did deliver presents on Christmas Eve, Santa is dead. Rip Santa. No longer with us. Boo-hoo. Spoiler alert. No young kids here? That's good. I remember the day I found out Santa wasn't real. I looked down at Santa as he gave me his present, and I suddenly thought to myself, why is Santa wearing my granddad's wedding ring? It's a very distinctive wedding ring. Then I realized Santa was granddad, and it broke my heart. I was 28 years old. But what a, wait a minute. What if I told you Santa was real? I want you to meet somebody today who was a real person. St. Nicholas, a.k.a. Santa Claus, Santa Claus, we call him. He was real. Yes, he was really real. This person existed. There's an ancient painting of him. St. Nicholas, born 280, died 343 AD CE. He was a bishop, bishop of the church, early church of Myra, which is in Smyrna, which is in Asia Minor, in what we call Turkey these days. An interesting person. He was a devout young Christian. He was incredibly wealthy, really wealthy, super rich. But he was also a devout Christian. And he used to pray in his local church before dawn each day. One day, the, the existing bishop of that place died, and they decided that what they would do would make the next person who walked into church the next day the new bishop of that region. Of course, it was Nicholas. And they came out of the shadows of the church, and they consecrated him bishop. And once he dealt with the surprise of that, he decided to visit his new place. And he went out into his city. It's a hot country, hot part of the world, glassless windows, open windows at night. And as he was walking through the city one night, he heard crying, sobbing of a family and their young children. And he crept up to the window and he listened, and he suddenly heard that what was going to happen to that family. They were destitute, in abject poverty, and they had to sell two of their daughters into slavery to feed the other kids. So he popped back home, literally got some gold, tossed it through the window, landed on their beds. They woke up the next day saved from slavery. And Nicholas actually rather enjoyed doing this. So he did, <clears throat> excuse me, he did it the next day. Went out listening to stories of hardship as he travelled through his city at night. And he did it the day after, and the day after. And after a certain period of time, people began to look out for him. And they knew who it was in time, but they never let him know that they knew who he was. And they simply would wake up in the mornings around that city and say, we've been visited by St. Nicholas. And all this was happening over 1,700 years ago. And for a 1,000 years in Europe, he's been venerated as a saint, St. Nicholas. In Holland where we get his nickname from, Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, and we've turned that into Santa Claus and Father Christmas. Great connections with Norse legends of Odin. Odin, the Norse god, used to travel through the sky with flying reindeer on the back of a sleigh. There's not enough time this morning to explore those connections. For most of his life, he was green. 
In 1881, he looked like this in New York, USA. Then in 1931, the Coca-Cola company changed him up. They gave Santa a makeover, to put him in a red suit, big white beard, black belt and boots. And that's the Santa we will see every day in Chartwell and other places around the world in the next few weeks. So that question, is he real? I think he is, really, through that spirit that he leaves with us, the legacy of St. Nicholas, the legacy of Christmas and the spirit of Christmas. And that's what's leading us into our Christmas appeal, which I heard my headmaster mentioned yesterday. And really appreciate the fact that gifts have started to arrive. But it would be really good to fill that porch up like we normally fill this space up each year at our carol service with those gifts. So, is he real? I'll leave that question with you. But you just need to look out for his bell. And maybe on Christmas Eve, you might just hear that bell. Wow, look at that. See, I told you he was real. Thank you, Santa, for visiting us today. <laughs> Round of applause for Santa. Thank you, Santa, for taking time out of your busy schedule. We're going to listen to a song now, because we can't sing. It's a song that connects the baby Jesus with the grown-up Jesus. And it's a song that's sung very regularly at our sister school at Dio. A beautiful song, Mary, Did You Know? Mary, my betrothed, you have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen and the sweetest smile. Don't be afraid. I'm the Lord's servant. I believe your son is the promised king of his people. What is his name? His name is Jesus. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our son? And daughters, did you know that your baby boy Baptize. has come to make you new? And it's this here. child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, do you know that your baby?
are you? Mary, did you know? Tell me who you are. Your baby boy is Lord oh, of Jesus. all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nation? the great I Thanks to you today for the season of Christmas, for time to enjoy the company of those we love, to rest and to enjoy the beauty of the great outdoors of New Zealand. We give thanks today for the, light of, for the life of St. Nicholas and his legacy that still inspires us at Christmas, a legacy that encourages us to generous acts of giving and sharing. We ask you to inspire us to give our time, talents and treasures, at Christmas especially. We pray for all those who have more than they need. Through the spirit of Santa, may they build for themselves bigger tables rather than higher fences. May the spirit of Christmas embodied in St. Nicholas remain with us all throughout this coming season. In Jesus' name, amen. So a short time of silent prayer for ourselves to reflect on the message of the day, Fletcher's prayers. So let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So just a couple of notices to finish up. Again, that Christmas appeal will be collecting this week and next week as well. I know some of your borders will be shooting off to different parts of the country on Thursday, but those of us who are in Hamilton, these, these doors will be open to receive your gifts for the next two weeks at least. Okay, those involved with the Alpha group, of course, we've had a bit of a hiatus with Alpha due to restrictions and lockdowns and whatnot. But well, we are going to finish off well. We'll finish off tonight. We're going to meet here from 6.30. It's an open invite to everybody. Be ice creams outside at 6.30 and other bits and pieces. And then we're going to watch um, a film at 6.45, a 90-minute film called The Nativity Story. And that will finish about 8.15. Then we'll finish with a bit more food and karakia. Be back to, particularly for boarders, back to boarding houses around 8.30. So that's the Alpha Christmas um, event this evening here in chapel. So let's pray God's blessing upon us as we depart this house of prayer into the remaining part of this week and day. Let's pray that the blessing of Christmas, the spirit of Christmas, of sacrificial, life-giving love and generosity will be God's gift to us this Christmas. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon us, those we love, those we care for, and those we will spend Christmas with this day and always. Amen. So let's share together the words of St. Paul's grace in Tereo and English. 
ki a tau, ki a tato katoa, te ata fa te tato eriki a ihu kraiti. Me te araha o te atua, me te fifina taitanga, ki te waru tapu ake ake ake. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. Let's go in the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the dignity of the Holy Spirit. Be strong, be happy, be holy. And thanks to Arjun and Fletcher for reading, and the team at Decorated, led by Arjun here in the chapel. We've noticed Christmas trees appear. And thank you, Jesse, if you'd like to play and lead us out of chapel this morning. Kia ora. <laughs>